good? Amen. <clears throat> if you have prayed over your giving, you may bring it up to one of the offering baskets when you are ready, and you may be seated. Please give your attention to Pastor Dave, because he's bringing us a great word this morning, and I'm really excited. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like red or blue? Blue work. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Great to be alive, isn't it? Yes. Jesus is Lord, and we are children of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Does it really get any better than that? Okay, so I'm going to do something a little outside of the box. <laughs> you know, what's P PD going to do this time? Yeah. I'm a uh, out of the box kind of guy. Um, I shoot straight from the hip. Uh, I have a, <laughs> a kind of a, a wild west mentality about things when it comes to churching and preaching and with reverence to God always. But I, I call a spade a spade, and I do what I do. And that's that. Amen. So speaking of shooting, I'm going to show you something. Uh, and just, I'm going to show you my sidearm, okay? And I'm going to show you this for a reason. Uh, it's a 32 caliber uh, revolver. And yes, I have a legal permit to carry it in South Carolina. Okay, so before anybody gets crazy online, uh, I'm not carrying it illegally. I follow all the laws. But I show you this to say something. This is not the answer to our problem. That's right. Okay? This is not the answer to our problem. Uh, this is a tool for protection and defense. It's not, to be, it's not meant to be a tool for offense. Okay? Uh, even in proper military exercises and, and defense of the country, that's what it's meant for, right? Weapons are meant to defend the country, not to go out and kill people for no reason. Okay? But there is an acceptable tool of offense. And that's what we want to talk about today. Uh, and you don't even need a permit to carry it. <laughs> it's called prayer. Prayer. Amen? So there is power of life and death in our word, y'all. Okay, the Bible says that there is power in prayer. Can we put our hands together in the house for the Lord, y'all? There's power in prayer. Let's put our hands together in the house, okay? And when I do that, I, I just I, I want you to recognize these words are from God. And I want you just to every now and then just put your hands together for Him and recognize and, and, and acknowledge what He's saying is true. It's too often they don't teach these kind of things in churches. Oh my, he just showed his gun. You know, I mean, that, you don't see that in your, your normal church service. But I don't have a normal message for you today. Okay? I have something that's going to speak hard truth. And I hope it'll, it'll set you free in some way, that it'll change your mindset about certain things. So I want to turn to John's Gospel, uh, the 11th chapter, verse 43. Uh, as we welcome the, uh, the, the message this morning, um, the Lord has something special for you today, and it's called Come Alive. Okay? Can we say that? Come Just... Alive. Okay. Come Alive. Listen, y'all, there may be a, a number of things uh, dead or comatose in your life. You know, I know there certainly uh, is in our nation. Okay? And in this world. Things that desperately need to come alive. Okay. Your hopes and your futures, they can come alive. Jesus never allowed what other people said about Him to change His opinion about Himself. Okay? So I want you to get that thought in your mind. Consider this for a moment, okay? Almost everyone in your life is more preoccupied with their life than they are your life. That's just a fact. What you think about yourself 
is more important than what other people who you meet think about you. Never forget this. It's not what people say about you that really matters in life. It's not what you believe about yourself that matters in life. Let's read this text. Okay, John uh, 11, cha- chapter 11, verse 43. It says, And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! Ooh. Please stand if you're able and uh, let us honor the Lord with reverence as we pray. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, uh, we just thank you for your holy word today. Father, today in this service, we want to release the potential in our lives to be all that we can be for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ and the terror of every demon in hell. In Jesus' holy and mighty name we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, y'all. This is about comebacks. Okay? Comebacks are necessary because of setbacks. Hallelujah. (laughs) This is not a message uh, about Lazarus. He is a great guy. uh, and, uh, and, And he's great for what we're talking about. But this is not a message about him. He was one of the biggest comebacks in the Bible, right? Uh, death to life, it doesn't really get any better than that. Uh, and if that ever happens to you, hallelujah. But it can be your story today. Are you dead? Do you need a comeback? To get back to life? Let me tell you something. You can have your comeback. Okay, Jesus is saying today, come alive! It's so loud in here. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, You can choose faith over fear. Okay? Hope over despair. You can choose love over hate. You can choose forgiveness over revenge. You can choose joy over worry. Right there? That's a five-minute sermon series. Or a, more than five minutes, a five-message sermon series. I apologize. That's a, that's, those, those, those words right there, we could talk about all day long. Okay, The Bible says rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Okay, and You can poison yourself watching fake news and fake prophets I recommend you turn it off. Okay? Rejoice in the Lord and feel the nearness of His presence. Praise God. So, you know, Moses, let's talk about him for a second. He let anger control his life. Okay? He killed an Egyptian and he lost his position as a mighty prince of Egypt. He became a fugitive, right? Uh, And he spent 40 years on the backside of of a wilderness in God's anger management class, right? Tending sheep, (laughs) the most lowly position possible on earth at the time. Went from a prince of the most powerful nation on earth to a shepherd. Who needs a comeback now? Whew! Have you fallen from glory? You want your comeback? God used Moses to crush Pharaoh, okay, and lead Israel out of Egypt in his 80s, y'all. Can you imagine an 80-year-old man leading a nation? That's a real comeback. He went from a lowly shepherd to a leader of more than a million people in just a few days. Hallelujah. And think of the enormity of that adjustment. 40 years of following God equipped him for that journey. I hope you don't have to wait 40 years. God's a God of miracles. He can do it instantly. Rahab was a prostitute, right? But she served Joshua and Caleb. Who are Joshua and Caleb? They're the ones that came after Moses, right? God anointed them as the leaders of Israel. She is recognized 
in the Bible's who's who. Okay? As she's the, in the lineage of King David. And Jesus Christ himself. A prostitute. Hmm. Thought you didn't know that. Whew. Stop beating yourself up, y'all, for your past failures. Okay? Write that down in your Bible. Beautiful. That's how the mercy of God sees every person in this room. Beautiful. That's how mercy sees you and you and you and you too. <laughs> All of you. <laughs> yes. We're all scarred vessels in the hand of a master potter who can transform our imperfections into matchless beauty. Hallelujah. An unlimited potential, anointed with power to terrorize every demon in hell. No one in this room is perfect, y'all. No one. We can live our life without regret, though. Okay? We can live our life without limitation. By what? By the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -mm. You only need to walk out of your emotional mess. Okay? Your financial and your marital grave. You need to live, love, laugh, be happy. Okay? It's time for your comeback. Hallelujah. You only need to walk out of it. Your life can be exciting. It can be victorious. It can be triumphant. In Jesus' name, y'all. Okay? Give them praise in the house. Woo! Clap it. Let's hear, let's hear it. Get, put your hands together, guys. Remember, whenever I say that, it's acknowledging something that's true. Okay? We want to give the Lord praise. Right now in America, okay, I'm going to touch on some America thing. Ooh, he's talking politics. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. This is a good place for that. Doesn't have to be there all the time. But we got to address some things. America is in a battle for its survival. Okay? And I assure you, that's a fact. Our leadership is becoming socialist. And I'm not going to go on and on. Just hear me out a second, okay? They're trying to initiate a Marxist model socialism. It's a godless system of government. You need to recognize these things. It's in your schools. It's indoctrinating your kids. This needs to be said. Okay? It's a form of communism. They're one and the same, really. Socialism is just communism with lipstick on. Okay? That's all it is. It tries to make it look prettier than what it is. And let me tell you something. It is going to shut down the churches. It's going to shut down everything that we think and we hold highly and we hold in high esteem. It will shut it down. It's turning this world, this, this nation into a godless place that's ran by man. Okay? When I was going to school as a child, every day we began with a prayer and a Bible reading over the public address system. It was still happening in my childhood. That was back in the late 70s, early 80s. Okay? We proudly stood in honor at the flag of the United States. Okay? And every day we gave the pledge of, we gave the pledge of allegiance. Today that's illegal. Today mobs in the street are burning the flags. Professional athletes who become millionaires under the banner of this flag refuse to honor it. Hollywood movie store stars mock patriotism. And anyone who believes in patriotism, anarchists, are wiping their feet on the flag of the United States of America, in the streets of America. They should be arrested, not applauded. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again, and this is where I'm going to leave it. Okay? If you don't love the land of the free and the home of the brave that was founded under God, there's planes leaving every hour. Goodbye. Okay? We love you in Jesus' name. It's time to come alive.
in this country, in this church, in your homes, in your workplaces. It's time to come alive. Okay? Our land needs healing, y'all. This life is a battlefield, whether you recognize it or not. I'm going to talk more about that in July when, we, when, I, when I speak again uh, about the battle for the mind. But right now, what you need to know is that you need to, to, to choose to fight until the victory comes. Okay? Fight! The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Okay, say that. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. I want you to get that in your head. Fight the good fight of faith. It's a fight, y'all. Okay, Ephesians 6. Put on the whole armor of God, it says. Right? And fight! Light conquers darkness. Truth conquers deception. Hope conquers doubt. Faith conquers fear. Love conquers hate. Action conquers indecision. And life conquers what? Death. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come alive. Come alive. Come alive. Live an exciting life by the power of God's Word and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The problem with Christians these days is that we've forgotten how to fight. We need to come alive. We've forgotten the will to fight. And we as a church body, and there's over 100 million uh, alleged Bible-believing, Holy Spirit-filled Christians in America. Okay, And I stress Holy Spirit-filled because Christians without the filling of the Holy Spirit are not walking in their full power. Okay, uh, So that kind of leads into what I'm about to say with that. Uh, but again, I say over 100 million Holy Spirit-filled Christians in America, allegedly. Okay, The true number is what kind of God showed me in the Spirit is actually only a remnant, like under 25 million in America. Okay, That's still a lot of people. I mean, there's what, like 400 million people? In, I mean, 25 million is a good little army, isn't it? Okay, so a 25 million soldier army uh, on a battlefield of a world war, that could easily take control. 25 million is a lot of people, okay? Especially ones r running around with the Holy Spirit, you know, and, and, and that kind of power. That's God. And 25 million people with God's power in them, they could easily take over the world and dominate it. Okay, and this isn't a world domination message. I mean, don't worry. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> if we would take that 25 million and just unify and start obeying the Word of God, and stand on the principles of righteousness in this, uh, this text right here? If we would just stand on this, we could take this nation back in 12 months. Yeah. Okay? Imagine if this happened in every country. Within a year, every country in the world would be living at levels of peace never known in world history. Praise God. God! Help us do this, Lord. I know true peace won't come, Lord, until your son comes back. He is the Prince of Peace. Okay, Pastor Dave. Really nice introduction here to your message. Uh, and hey, we get it. You're passionate about this nation. And you want to see us freed from the tyranny of Satan's power, right? Destroying the world. But it's been like that for all of world history, PD. Okay? What do you have to say today that's going to apply to our life that's going to make some big change? It's, yeah, that was my next thing. Glad you asked. I had a pastor who used to say, so what? You know, every time he was getting to a point. Yeah? And then he'd give the point. So my point is that first thing is first. Prayer. We got it? Prayer. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Pastor Dave is going to try to pass off the same old, same old blah, blah, blah. If we pray, we can change the world. Right? You ever hear that cliche? Someone says, pray about it. <laughs> and you're like, no, I need help. Pray about it. And you just kind of get sick of hearing that, don't you? Well, duh. The Bible says prayer will change everything. 
It's the truth. It's a certain kind of prayer, though. You know, it's not just blah, 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 talking to God like some memorized prayer. It's a certain type of prayer. And we'll talk about that for a minute. Mark eleven twenty four says, anything we ask and believe, it is done. When we, but it's when we ask and we believe when praying, right? Not believe when we see it, but when, we, when we're praying, do we believe it, okay? You want change? Then pray and believe it's done. And I promise you it'll happen. Okay? You want healing from a deadly sickness once and for all? You want salvation for your family members? You want provision from God? Uh, you know, to start a church? To start a business? Whatever it is, pray and believe. Okay? Believe what you're praying has been done in that exact moment when you prayed it. Don't doubt it, and it will come to pass. And I can tell you from personal experience, it's true. Okay, it's not just me, blah, 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 repeating something that some other pastor said. Okay, wage war through prayer. And my grandmother often said something. She, she always said, some prayer, some power. More prayer, more power. Much prayer, much power. Hallelujah. How much do you pray, y'all? Okay, really, I'm asking you. How much do you pray? I'm not talking about memorized prayers. I'm not talking about uh, God is great, God is good, let us thank Him for our food. Or now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Okay, I'm not talking about those kind of things. I'm talking about prayer, warfare against powers and principalities. The Bible says what you bind on earth, you will bound in heaven. Okay, And what you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Paul said, fight the good fight. Put on the whole armor of God and go after the prince of darkness. You have that kind of firepower. The purpose of prayer is not to give, you, uh, is not to give orders to God. The purpose of prayer is to get orders from God. Hallelujah. Jesus did not teach His disciples how to preach, y'all. Okay? They turned the world upside down, even without being taught to preach. But He did teach them something. Taught them how to pray. Okay? They came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. Why? Why'd they ask him that? Because when Jesus prayed, <laughs> dead people got out of their graves. They started walking. The, way, the lame walked. The blind could see. Demons trembled in the presence of the carpenter. Hmm. He had a power that they recognized, y'all. Okay? Prayer has the power to cure sickness and to heal every disease. Okay, and I'm not just talking about the disease of the mind or the mind of the body. Disease is in everything that we have going on. Everything that's bad is disease. Okay? Yeah. It's a lie. I'm the father of lies. I don't care what it is. It's a child of Satan if it's bad. Okay? And prayer can shatter the shackles of misery and habit that enslave you and you and you and you. Okay? And me. And those of you who are online right now, the people that are in your family, it can free you too. Not just for the people here in this house. Okay? People say when God, when is God going to do something? <laughs> Y'all, the initiative rests with you. Find the devil, crush him, put your foot on the head of the devil, and say, No weapon formed against us shall ever prosper. Give the Lord praise in the house. Thank you, Jesus. The initiative comes from you on earth. Okay? From you, you loose things in heaven. You bind things in heaven. It's not God's job. It's your job. Okay? You can bind what's happening in your house. You can bind what's happening in your life, in your church. You can bind what's happening in the government, in Washington, D.C. 
Let me tell you, if the church in America would start doing that, the demon powers over that city and every city would have a migraine headache, y'all. Okay? Amen. We have the authority in us. You need to learn to terrorize the devil with your power. And what's your power? Your prayer. Amen. When you start to pray, the devil says, uh oh, here she comes. Here he comes. That's what should be happening when you open your mouth to pray. You should be scaring demons. How does it go? Well, it doesn't go praying a memorized prayer, like I said. It goes something like this. Satan, I command you in the mighty name of Jesus, by the power of His shed blood and the power of the Word of God, get your hands off my marriage. Get your hands off my children. Get your hands off my physical health. Get your hands off my finances. Get your hands off my business. I am the property of the living God. Jesus Christ has purchased me at the cross. The victory is mine over you in the authority of Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Get lost, devil. Woo! That's a prayer. You can ask Kelly. I was screaming at the devil in my back room yesterday. He slipped something satanic in my house. I said, how? I'm getting mad thinking about it. Sorry. I'm going to let it go. Lord, you got it. It's already been handled. What's America's answer, y'all? The answer is recorded in Chronicles 7.14. Let's, let's read it together. <clears throat> if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to look at this text for a minute. You know, this is a, a, a propositional revelation here, okay? So what does that mean? That if you do this, God will do that, right? If my people pray, if you seek my face, and you turn from your wicked ways, if you believe all things are possible, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal your land. Hallelujah. Now these uh, next verses are not up on the screen because they uh, kind of came to me after I gave my verses to Pastor Aaron. But uh, I just want to, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to read them. I'm just going to kind of paraphrase some things. Um, in uh, Matthew 16:24, uh, it says, "If any man or woman will come after me uh, and deny themselves and follow me." Matthew 18:19 says, "If any two of you uh, shall agree on anything, that God will bring it to pass." Okay? And Matthew 21, 21 says, If you have faith and doubt not, you shall say to this mountain, Be removed and cast into the sea, and it will be done! Right. Hallelujah. America's answer begins with a national prayer meeting, y'all. <laughs> and that binds the demonic forces that are now destroying this nation. And, and, and y'all, it begins with the house of God. Okay? Praying to the living God of our nation. Consider America's answer from our founding fathers. The Bible says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Hallelujah. America as a whole today, it's forgotten the God of the Bible. On the, on the most part. And really, guys, moving kind of away from America, that's the whole world's answer. Okay? It's not just for the red, white, and blue. It's for the red, yellow, black, and white. Because <laughs> we are all precious in His sight. Hallelujah. You remember that song? Okay. If you're listening in other countries today, online, Pakistan, I know definitely, Africa, Mexico, United Kingdom, Russia, China, I don't care where it is. You ask me, Pastor Dave, how can we win this fight? It's the same answer as America's answer. Have a prayer meeting. Have a national one if you can. Even if you have to go underground in some hidden house so your government doesn't find you, do what you got to do. Yeah. But do it. Amen. Okay, Take your countries back. And do it now. 
America, this nation belongs to you. We the people, the Constitution says. Who's the people? Yeah. Yeah. Me? Right? We're the people. Come alive. Secondly, run to the fight. You see a fight? Don't cower. Stop it with this namby-pamby, wimpy Christianity. Okay? Run to it. Get in it. Come alive. Get off those pews. Okay? When David saw Goliath on the battlefield, he knew it would be a fight to the death. It was a fight against impossible odds. The Bible says that David ran toward Goliath. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. He didn't sneak up on him. He ran to him. He was aggressive, right? And he was fearless. He was confident. Why? Because God Almighty had demonstrated something in elementary school to him. (laughs) That he could kill a lion. Yeah? Yeah? What happened in graduate school? He could kill a bear. Hmm. So what happened in his postgraduate work? He's going to take that atheist down. Okay? Because God Almighty was with him. And I don't want you guys out there going and slaying atheists. Okay? Love them. Love them so much you tell them the truth. Okay? That same God that was with Goliath is with you. He's with all of you. Okay? Talk like it. Act like it. Think like it. Live like it. Fight like it. God is on your side, y'all. You have the authority of His name and you have the power of His Word. You are His child. Do it in Jesus' name. Okay? God's not looking for wimps. He's looking for people who are willing to engage the forces of darkness and to overcome. He still loves the wimps. He loves you. Yeah, if you're a wimp, that's okay. He'll get you there. Okay? But he loves winners when it comes to fighting battles, right? Come alive in this house, y'all. It's time for you to come alive. Feel it in your heart. God's looking for people who will risk everything that he gives them to accomplish the greatness for which they are destined. Every one of you has a divine destiny and you, and you can destroy it. Running from your problems. Stop running from your problems. What would you try to do for God if you knew you couldn't fail? Nothing is impossible for those who believe. That's what the Word says. right? I assure you, had Pastor Steve and Aaron not practiced that principle when they were meeting in a house about five miles from here about a year ago, they'd still be in that house. Okay? Some churches, they stay in those houses and they don't get beautiful buildings like this for 10 years or more. They meet in tents and things like that. Whatever, Nothing wrong with that. But why? Why don't they get what they really want? Because they toil and they work hard and they beg and they plead. Please give us your money and all that kind of stuff, right? Hard work instead of doing what Pastor Steve and Pastor Aaron did. Okay? And this is not to put them on a pedestal, it's just to use them as an example. Okay? Believing they had a huge place of worship even before they had people to fill it. Okay? They ran towards their Goliath. What was their Goliath? A house full of people and a beautiful building. They said, No, we're going to get that building because we're going to fill it. Because God said so. And they believed it. And they checked it off in the Spirit, and it was done. Amen, hallelujah. It happened quicker than a lot of us thought. And people are coming, look. Amen. And look around. I mean, a lot of churches spend a lot of money trying to hide that they don't have a lot of people. (laughs) They have people with specialized cameras that focus and make everything look all big and beautiful. These guys aren't trying to trick you or anything. They admit it. The place isn't full. But there's a good thing about that. They are believing their first 90 people this year will be in here. I've heard Pastor Steve speak it out many times. And I know God's going to give them what they believe for. Okay? Because they believe it when they pray. Listen, we don't have to all agree about everything, 
when it comes to this and that and the life of a church. Okay? These guys here as pastors and you as a body are going to grow this church based on what God says. Okay? And God will give y'all what you believe for. Okay? He will always place things together to glorify his name with whatever we lift up to him, especially faith, right? A mustard seed of faith. And let me tell you, this place will be filled with people who are Holy Spirit-filled and saved and believing Jesus is Lord and who are reaching out and getting others to be the same way, okay? In the way that God has equipped these pastors for this season uniquely. Amen? I'm being a little prophetic here. It's all about Jesus, y'all. It's all about. He's not. It's not about anything else. It doesn't matter what we think or what anyone thinks. Okay. Take charge of your life, or someone else will. Okay. All that matters is that Jesus is magnified and God is glorified. When that's happening, things start happening. Okay. You mix some faith in there. Before you know it, you got a delicious stew. All right. Okay, last but not least here. Well, let me say this. I just want to say this again. Don't run from your problems. Okay? Don't run from your problems. Take charge. You're not a victim. It doesn't matter what's happening in your life, how bad it is. You are not a victim. You're the victor. You're victorious. Okay? Endure the fight. That's the last thing I want to kind of just touch on a bit, okay? You don't have to look like a winner to be a winner. Okay? Lazarus was dead for four days. Did he look like a winner? David versus Goliath. David didn't look like a winner, did he? Look at the two of them. But when he cut off the, the, the Philistine's head, what happened? They said he was the winner. Hallelujah. Don't cut off anybody's head, y'all. Okay? <laughs> Got <laughs> In this day and age, you have to give precursors and, and like, what do you call them? Like little disclaimers. <laughs> okay. That kid won, y'all. Christ was on the cross. Did he look like a winner? <laughs> Looked like Rome had won again, didn't it? The disciples were running in terror. The demons of hell were laughing with joy. For three days it existed in that exact way, right? Until he who is the conqueror of death and hell and the grave rose triumphant. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> On the third day, victorious over the death. Okay? Comebacks happen even when you're reduced to nothing. And that's a kind of like a kind of transitioning into this, this kind of finality here. Uh, Mary and Martha said to Jesus at the death of, our, our, of, of their brother, they're like, hey, our brother is sick, Jesus. Jesus didn't go on purpose. Okay? He knew how Lazarus was. He knew he was going to die. He didn't send a messenger to explain. He didn't send any flowers. He didn't send a card. You know, none of that kind of stuff. He deliberately waited until Lazarus was dead. Reduced to what? Nothing. Exactly. Because God can get glory out of nothing, y'all. God, del God delays are not, uh, are not God's denials. Okay? Yeah. I want you to write that down and put it on your refrigerator. <laughs> God's delays are not God's denials. I've been praying about it for two weeks, Pastor Dave. Nothing's happened. I've been praying about some things for years, y'all. I still believe it's done. Amen. Listen, God's not watching your time clock. Okay? He's not checking your stopwatch. God will do everything on His time. And it will be a perfect time. Hallelujah. You just have to believe when you pray that it's done, and in the Spirit it will be done right then and there. You know, there's going to be an inst there might be an instant manifestation. That's called a miracle. Hallelujah. Thank God for miracles. Or it might take some time. That's called a process. Right? But God gets glory in all of it. 
Jesus cursed a fig tree. It was dead immediately at the roots. But it took 24 hours to show anything, didn't it? There's a process for death, isn't there? And that's what we're praying for everything bad in our life. Uh, anything, or anything holding us back from our divine destiny and everything that we feel God's put on our life. We're praying death over those holdbacks. And sometimes death takes some time, right? Have you been reduced to nothing in some areas of your life? Hey, listen, guys, right now there's some things that uh, uh, nobody believes that, that I can have, things that I've been talking about, asking the Lord for, uh, things based on what I have to build on. He, you know, you know, I'm talking about the sale of our house right now, Kelly and I, at, a, at an unrealistic, illogical high price. God told me that price. I know He did. Okay, the salvation of certain far gone family members in my in my in my family. Unrealistic healing requests on ourselves and those that we love, mentally and physically. These are all things that I've believed recently and for some time. The scope and extent of Kelly and I's Bible bank uh, and uh, you know the ministry expansions in the next few years that are probably going to take millions of dollars to, to deal with. Interstate expansion, uh, launching a church up north, you know, all these kind of things. Uh, and, and we with the church, we plan to impact thousands of people in a region that is sleepy and religious, okay? Not historically welcoming to Holy Spirit filled kind of things, you know. But God, we say it's done in Jesus' name and we believe it. We saw the green mark, check, in our spirit. I literally, that's when I ever see that, I know it's done. Okay? We're expecting that miracle, even though we have nothing to show it's possible. And you guys are like, what? You got nothing to show? What are you talking about? (laughs) It's done. Okay? Expect a miracle when you're down to nothing. God is up to something. It's the crushed olive that produces the pure virgin olive oil. Okay? It's the crushed petal of a rose that produces perfume. And it's the crushed heart that cries out to God and wins total victory over the world. The flesh. And what else? The devil. Okay? In the genesis of time, God took nothing. Nothing. Just dirt and clay. And he breathed into it and you came out of that. Come on. John the Baptist said he must increase so that God could, uh, he must decrease so God could increase, right? Uh, and he, if we get that in our head, we got something. Do you want to come alive in here today? Yeah. yeah. Let me see a show of hands. Who wants to come alive? Anybody? You don't put your hand up. I like the double hand. That's okay. God wants you to come alive. John was saying, as soon as I empty myself of my will, my ego, my pride, my vanity, God can use me for his glory as long as I'm not full of me. Okay? And it's then and only then that God will bring life to all these things in your heart, y'all, when you is out of the way and it's all about God. Many are willing to serve God, but only in the capacity of an advisor. God doesn't need your advice. Okay? Put it all aside. Let God lead you. Clay in the hands of the master potter. That's nothing. And he takes worthless clay and he makes it a vessel of beauty. An honor. David took a slingshot and changed world history. Jesus Christ was nailed to an old rugged cross to defeat the prince of darkness and the powers of Calvary, the powers of hell at Calvary. Hallelujah. It was nothing. Okay? What does God look for when he wants to do something? He looks for nothing. (sighs) Thank you, Jesus. Nothing brings God glory. Okay, so that church, uh, I want to just close this time. I want to address you. So, Kelly and I's time with you in this congregation, uh, as part of kind of the, the founding leadership here, is drawn to a close uh, as we transition into launching a church uh, in another state, expanding the Bible bank and multi-state ministry. Uh, it's been an honor to serve with you all. 
okay? Helping to plant this church last year, but God's moving us into a new season. I believe that I, I'm on the calendar uh, to speak again in July, uh, and we'll still be helping with some worship throughout August until Pastor Steve and Aaron can kind of get that transition. Uh, but God wants, I want to leave you with something. You know, don't get wrapped up in the fact, oh, PD and Kelly, we love you guys. We'll, we're going to be around, okay? Because we're still at the Myrtle Beach Bible Bank. We're going to be back and forth. We've got someone leading it here in Myrtle Beach. We're starting a Bible Bank up north. We're, we're going to be around, okay? But <clears throat> I want to leave you with something. God wants to do amazing things through you all. <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> and through that church, okay? Joshua 3, verse 5 holds the secret, y'all. Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, it says. The Lord is going to do amazing things through you all. Dwight Moody uh, once said that the world has yet to see what God will do with the man or woman for or through that person who is fully or wholly consecrated to God. Right? The world is looking for that person, my friends. God's looking for that person. Why not you? Why not that church? We, why not miracles as a regular basis? Why not an evangelism explosion in this area that brings thousands to Christ? Maybe you'll be the third awakening. You know, there's been two great awakenings in America. Maybe that church will be the third awakening. No, you're okay. No, really. It can happen. Consecration is complete surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Okay? We surrender everything to our God, our time, our talent, our treasures, absolute surrender. And I want you to hear this. Nothing belongs to us, not even ourselves. Okay? The Bible says you're bought with a price, the price of redemption, the price of blood. You're not your own. Consecration means to completely be dedicated to God. And Jesus set the standard, y'all. Okay? He gave us His all at Calvary. And aren't we supposed to be co-imitators of Christ? <laughs> That's what Ephesians says, right? I want you to hear this. Coming to church 90 minutes every Sunday morning is not complete consecration. Okay? How many of you guys have heard of Jonathan Edwards? Okay? I'm sure Steve has. Uh, he's a pastor in the 1700s. And he served as the president of Princeton University. His pastor. And that was back when the Ivy League allowed God to be talked about, the Ivy League colleges. But if you read about his life and the revival that, that happened, he was the first great awakening in America. Hundreds of thousands of people in America came to salvation through him. Read about him. It's amazing. If we give more of ourselves to God, God will give more of ourselves to us and himself. Right? Consecration is total. It's absolute. I want you to write that down. And, have, and don't forget Habakkuk. Habakkuk 2.2. 2, okay? Write your vision down. Let me tell you, you can get, ask Kelly. I've got sticky notes all over the house with our vision. And stuff. They're stuck in Bibles. They're stuck in books. They're stuck on this and that all in my office at work. Everything. I've got sticky notes with the vision. Write them down. Okay? And when God answers that prayer, come back and give Him praise in the house. Hallelujah. Right? Give Him praise. Thank Him. Start praising Him right now. Did you just ask God for something in prayer? And say, Lord, I'm believing as I'm praying, as Pastor Dave is saying. Well, guess what? If you believe what I said, that it's done, and it's going to happen, make sure you go home and thank Him and praise Him all day today. Because that thankfulness and gratefulness is how we come to God. And that's how things work, okay? It may be minutes, it may be years before it happens in the physical, but just know it's done, okay? You'll be amazed at the miracles that are going to happen. Psalms 37.4, delight yourselves in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Put that on your refrigerator door, okay? I'm giving you all kinds of nuggets here today. He's just waiting for you to ask and ask big, y'all. The greatest tragedy in life is in, is in the prayers that go un. Uh, is in the prayers that get unasked. Okay? You're not going to offend God by asking Him big things. Yeah. If anything, you'll offend Him by not coming to Him and being so fake humble. 
I'm not worthy. Stop. Be powerful. Be reverent. Be grateful. But come boldly to the throne, it says. Okay? Ask in faith, believing, and you shall receive. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I will hear from heaven and heal their land. Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house. Before Pastor Steve comes up here to say some things, let me bless you. Please lift your hands to receive it. Stand if you're able. And now may the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord make His face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you, giving you His peace. May you be filled with God's grace, God's joy and confidence, because fear has no part in the life of a Bible-believing Christian. May you know that God is leading you down the path of righteousness and that He is lifting the burdens from your mind and from your life. May you be filled with the peace that surpasses all understanding. And may you be certain that you are a child of God and heaven in your future home. Heaven is your future home. In the authority of Jesus' name, step into a new dimension of life that leads to the nail-pierced hands of the Son of God. Receive this blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.